Final Cut Pro 11 is here. Finally, the big leap we've all been waiting for since really the last most significant update, which was, in my opinion, when we moved from version 10.3 to 10.4. Apple and the Final Cut Pro team has decided to just, you know, skip over version 10.9 and label this update as 11. The list of updates is long, and while we could spend some time diving into the details, I'm going to leave that to my other Final Cut Pro YouTuber friends, and instead focus on what this update means for the future of Final Cut Pro and you. So let's get into it. In paying attention to all the chatter over the years in the comments on my videos, my friends' videos, in Final Cut Pro Facebook groups, on Twitter and X, there are five categories of serious concern from those of us who love and sometimes the Final Cut Pro. Those categories are subscription, promotion, innovation, communication, and continuation. See how they all end in T-I-O-N? That was... That was kind of nice. Now we're going to go through all five of these categories and have a little chat about what this update means for each of those concerns. First off, subscription. I hear constantly that Apple is going to make Final Cut Pro a subscription. It seems to be a lot of people's worst fear, and it's not something that I personally have been concerned with. I just don't think it's going to happen. And with Final Cut Pro continuing to be $2.99 or a free upgrade to those of us who already own it, I think we can finally put this concern to rest. Apple will not. I repeat, will not make Final Cut Pro a subscription. And you're saying, they made Final Cut Pro for iPad a subscription. And I say that was a brand new app that had no precedent. And it was a great way for Apple to test how users would feel about it being a subscription. And from my point of view, so far, I'd say it's a success. Subscribe if you want, skip it if you don't want it. The difference with Final Cut Pro for Mac is that Apple knows better. They know that they can't take something that was a one-time purchase with free updates and suddenly turn it into a monthly or annual subscription. The blowback would be severe, and the hit the Final Cut Pro brand would take would not be worth it. If Apple were to ever make Final Cut Pro a subscription, they would have to create an all-new app that did significantly more than what Final Cut Pro, as is, can do. I made a video about this where I wondered if Apple would bring back Final Cut Studio in order to provide the tools that professional TV streaming and film editors want. If Apple launched Final Cut Pro Studio, they could easily make it a subscription and avoid angering the current Final Cut Pro user base. Would some be angry about it? Sure. But I think the vast majority of Final Cut Studio customers would be amenable to a subscription because they can work the cost of that subscription into what they charge for the work that they do. Are there concerns about subscriptions beyond just the cost? Absolutely. We all have concerns about rentware and not being able to access our projects without an active subscription. I'm going to save that discussion for another time. But Final Cut Pro really is a loss leader for Apple. They offer it at a low price and with free updates for life because once you're committed to that app, you're also committed to Apple's hardware. In Final Cut Pro 11, I haven't read through all the system requirements yet, it has a host of features that are going to require Apple Silicon and Mac OS Sequoia to work. And with the Magic Mask, auto captions, and spatial video features that have been added, those of you still using Intel machines are going to have to buy new Macs and new iPhones for those of us who want to edit spatial video. And when Final Cut Pro 11.1 comes out, there may be features that require an M2 chip or later, etc, etc. So the subscription is really to the hardware. Every two to four years, you trade in your current Mac for a new one, just like we do with our iPhones. The same applies to the iPad and its compatibility with Final Cut Pro for iPad. I'm sure it's going to happen with Final Cut Camera and the compatibility that app has with the iPhone. Apple knows better than to pile on with a subscription for Final Cut Pro. Now, Final Cut Studio, that I would almost guarantee would be a subscription. So let's once and for all put to bed any concerns about Final Cut Pro, now version 11, moving to a subscription moving forward. It's not going to happen. All right, so let's get into promotion. Back in 2022, over 100 professional TV and film editors wrote an open letter to Tim Cook about their concerns about Final Cut Pro. The main point was that Apple was not promoting and marketing Final Cut Pro enough to demonstrate to the people who make film and television that Final Cut Pro was a viable option for editing film and television. Back in the days of Final Cut Pro Studio, Apple promoted Final Cut Pro's use on films and documentaries on their website. They would show how it was being used in professional workflows on documentaries and feature films. They even made one series show how David Fincher was using it on one of his films. This was all really, really cool back in the day to see this being used in this way. But of course, all that ended with the release of Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, it didn't end, but the only place you really saw Apple show how Final Cut Pro was being used in film and TV was on the Final Cut Pro website. And while this is great, very cool, it really wasn't enough. 
What about social media? What about YouTube? Why not demonstrate how Final Cut Pro is used to edit Apple TV Plus shows during a keynote presentation? They show how the iPhone can be used in professional settings. Why not Final Cut Pro? Why isn't Apple using promotion to make the strongest case for why Final Cut Pro is the best tool for editing moving pictures? Why not demonstrate how it's being used, how editors who have used Avid and Premiere Pro love the editing tools and the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro? Why not show how they thought the app was a joke, but once they really learned how to use it, it blew them away? While I don't think Apple has done enough to address this concern, there are indications that they're coming along. The biggest indication? Apple released a video on their YouTube channel that was all about Final Cut Pro version 10.8. We haven't seen a dedicated video like this from Apple about Final Cut Pro in a long, long time. And the fact that this was shown on their YouTube channel versus just something that played on their website is a big deal. Now, they also released a video promoting Final Cut Pro for iPad 2, so this is all a great step in the right direction. Of course, though, we wouldn't be Final Cut Pro fans if we didn't want more. And honestly, I think that's fair. While Apple may not go as hard to grab a larger share of post-production workflows for film and TV, they can at least expand their promotion of Final Cut Pro's use in film and television beyond the Final Cut Pro website. Now, my dream? Apple creates a dedicated Final Cut Pro YouTube channel and other social media accounts and has a team of people creating content around how Final Cut Pro is being used for content creation, like what I do, film and television, and in any other unexpected places where Final Cut Pro is the centerpiece for creating amazing work. So has Apple TV resolved this concern from pro TV and film professionals? Not yet, but I really do think they're moving in the right direction. All right, so we've got innovation. I just rewatched Apple's Final Cut Pro video about the 10.8 update, the one that is on their YouTube channel. And when you showcase all the updates that have been released over the last few years, it really does feel very innovative and that meaningful updates are coming out regularly. But when you step back from the fancy marketing materials and really try to assess how you're feeling, it just doesn't feel like quite enough. And what causes that? For me, of course, I see Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve rolling out update after update with powerful tools that I'd love to have in Final Cut Pro. And seeing all of that makes you feel like you're missing out and that your preferred video editing app is consistently falling farther and farther behind. And even though Final Cut Pro 11 is a big leap with a lot of cool features, there are still some frustrations. Auto captions, awesome, but you can't easily turn those captions into on-screen titles, which for a lot of us, editing vertical social media content is really a must-have in 2024. Why does Apple hand us the keys to a Ferrari that has four bald tires? Sure, we can fire it up and drive it around, but we can't do what the Ferrari is meant to do because we'll skid off the road and crash and burn. We want to let Final Cut Pro rip, but there are all these sort of mind-boggling shortcomings that keep us going... Why? And no doubt there's pressure on the Final Cut Pro team to deliver new features, and instead of waiting for auto captions and automatic on-screen subtitles, they release the auto captions to get the ball rolling, give us a little start toward this progress that we're craving. Which is great, but the big, meaningful features we've been asking for for years, they seem to get left out. Now, the Final Cut Pro team, if you're watching, I know this sounds like I'm a spoiled brat. You have added, no doubt, features we've been asking for for years. The scrolling timeline, duplicate clips, object tracking, custom naming effects in the browser, this new magnetic mask tool. There are plenty of them that we are thrilled to have. But you have gotten us addicted to magic. You have created just enough innovation that feels truly like magic that you have us craving it constantly. So while these more basic features are welcome and we love them, we keep waiting for the Apple version of, say, powerful roles-based sound mixing tools built right into Final Cut Pro, or a color management workflow that revolutionizes how all of that works, just like the magnetic timeline revolutionized track-based editing, adding an incredible text-based editing tool that rivals add-on apps like Descript, and of course, the use of Apple intelligence to analyze all the audio and video of every clip so that we can easily search the browser for the soundbite that we need or the clip that has the tree in it. Keyframing, what about keyframing? Ease in and ease out keyframing. Is that magic? No, but holy crap, is it long overdue? And those are just a few of the big features we're all waiting on, pins and needles for Apple to create in their special Apple way. For some of us, we have all the patience in the world. Others, 
their patience is running low, and for many, they lost their patience and moved to Resolve. Now, do any of these features released in Final Cut Pro 11 tempt users who are using CapCut or DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro? Do any of those features make them switch or switch back? I hear from switchers all the time that if Apple adds this or they add that to Final Cut Pro, they'll switch back in a heartbeat. While the magnet mask and auto captions and spatial video are great, they're not the kind of mind-blowing features Apple is capable of making that gets people to double down on FCP or switch back without hesitation. Could spatial video end up being revolutionary? Sure. But it's very early for this kind of video tech, and it's great that Apple's innovating in that regard. I love it. But again, what's the point of having a cutting-edge Ferrari with revolutionary powertrain tech if the tires on the car are bald? And I think that's why people are writing comments on this video right now about how Final Cut Pro 11 is, you know, it's nice but it's still not enough. And if you're not writing a comment to that end, certainly let me know. Now that you've seen the release notes for Final Cut Pro 11, is it enough? Is it enough for you? Are you switching back? Are you switching from CapCut? Are you going to continue to use it no matter what? Let's hear it in the comments. And the other thing I want to talk about is communication. What is Apple telling us about Final Cut Pro and when? In Eric Lenz's documentary, Cutting Edge, Moving Slow, The Final Cut Pro Conundrum, a few of us Final Cut Pro YouTubers talked about how we're all kind of in the dark when it comes to the future of Final Cut Pro. Apple wasn't releasing beta versions of the software for anyone to test. They weren't giving YouTubers early access so that they could be clued into what Apple's plans are. Apple wasn't mentioning the road ahead for Final Cut Pro in their keynotes. Apple, of course, has always shrouded their products in secrecy and even some of their software. Of course, they release betas of their operating systems, but not their Pro apps. We just sit there and keep refreshing the App Store, hoping that Today's the day that a new version of Final Cut or Motion or Logic Pro comes out. But I will say things are moving in the right direction with Apple's communication. They've mentioned future versions of Final Cut Pro in the last few Apple events. They released two dedicated videos to Final Cut Pro on their YouTube channel. And of course, they participate in the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit by allowing attendees to tour Apple headquarters and meet with the Final Cut Pro team. And while the Final Cut Pro team doesn't tell them any details about what's to come with Final Cut, they did tell attendees last year that they have distinct plans for Final Cut Pro for the next five to six years. This, in my opinion, was huge. And, and this is the exact kind of communication that matters. It lifts morale, it instills confidence, it puts our troubled minds at ease. And what I really love is that Apple is partnering with Final Cut Pro YouTubers to get them the app updates early so they can create content that's ready on launch day, like today. We've got a bunch of videos from YouTubers showing us these new features in Final Cut Pro 11. This is exactly what I was hoping to see when I participated in Eric Lenz's documentary, and as of now, I'm really satisfied with what Apple's doing to better communicate their intentions for Final Cut Pro. All right, so lastly, let's talk about continuation. I had to actually ask ChatGPT to help me with the title of this section. I was like, is there a word that ends in T-I-O-N that is synonymous with the idea of whether or not a product will continue to exist? And ChatGPT spat out, continuation. ChatGPT was very helpful, and I think, honestly, I would have lost my mind if all five chapter titles for this video weren't a word that ended in T-I-O-N. Okay, so without question, the thing I hear most in my comments about Final Cut Pro is that Apple is going to discontinue it. They're going to kill the app, murder it, just like they did with their awesome professional photo editing app, Aperture. I have never given in to this concern. I have known in my bones that Apple is not going to abandon Final Cut Pro. But others, of course, weren't so sure. Even after Apple released Final Cut Pro for iPad, people seemed convinced the app would get the axe. Did Final Cut Camera allay their concerns? No, it did not. Well, will Final Cut Pro 11 end those concerns? I certainly hope so. And that's why I'm going to tell you, Final Cut Pro is here to stay, and the release of Final Cut Pro for iPad, Final Cut Camera, and Final Cut Pro 11 is definitive proof of that fact. Period. End of story. So, let's recap. Will Final Cut Pro go subscription? No, and I don't think it ever will. The only way they add another subscription is if they release an all-new version of Final Cut Studio. Is Apple doing enough to promote Final Cut Pro now that we're two years out from the open letter. No, they've made progress, but it's still not enough. And if we all think Final Cut Pro is one of the best options for film and television post-production workflows, we want Apple to get behind that as well and commit to demonstrating it in how they promote the application. Innovation. Does Final Cut Pro 11 satisfy those of us who have been let down by all the recent updates? No. 
I still don't think Apple is going far enough fast enough to give us the tools we need to really let Final Cut Pro rip. Don't worry, I'm not going to reference the Ferrari thing again. I think you kind of get it. Communication. This for me, the biggest turnaround I've seen. I'm really, really happy with how Apple and the Final Cut Pro team is communicating their intentions with the app and partnering with content creators to further demonstrate what new updates can do. And lastly, continuation. Final Cut Pro, I'm telling you, is here to stay. It ain't going anywhere. So get subscribed to my and my Final Cut Pro YouTube friends channels so we can learn, prognosticate, complain, and celebrate everything going on in the world of Final Cut Pro. That's all I've got for this one, everyone. Until the next one, I will see you soon, and let's all get back to chopping some broccoli. Seriously, I, it's uh, 1210. I gotta get this thing edited if I wanna publish it by five o'clock, so let's go.